welcome. Our help is in the name of God, who made the heavens and the earth. And we're gathered here today in this place of worship to remember and thank God for the life of Cornelis Klutwijk, who we all knew as, as Cor. He was a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather. And he was a devoted Christian and a steady friend. Psalm 90 says that we get to live 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. And yet Cor got to live to be 91, a blessed, a blessed 91 years. He was a trooper right to the end. Cor died at peace, his family by his side, and his loss leaves us with tears even as we remember the good stories and we laugh and we cry. And we give God thanks for his life. With love and faith, the family placed Cor's body in the grave today at um, Valley View Memorial Cemetery. And now we're here to remember and celebrate his life. We've come to express our emotions, to give God thanks, to give the praise of our hearts, and to commend into God's care Cor's family. All the songs that we sing today were chosen by Cor, and the passage that we're going to reflect on he had written it down by hand, which one we want, he wanted us to think about um, in this service. And the family thanks you all for coming today. They take great strength in being surrounded by the, the love that you bring here. And after the service, they will be available uh, for coffee, for refreshments. There won't be a receiving line, but they'll be around and you can speak to them as you feel led. As we enter into this time, we remember the words of Jesus. He said, blessed are you who mourn, for you will be comforted. And he also says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, who, even, he who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And the Apostle Paul says, whether we live or if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. We draw strength from these words as we go into this hour. Let's sing our opening song, Dwell in me, O blessed spirit, how I need your help divine. be seated. We're here to remember Cor's life. And before we do that, let's ask God to be present with us. Please join with me in prayer. Comforting God, here in this place where we so often meet, we pray that you would meet us once again with the comfort and the help of your Holy Spirit. Dwell in us here in this moment so that we can give you proper thanks for the gift you gave us in Cor Klutwig. Be present here as we tell the story of his life and his impact on our lives. 
Help us in this service to express our feelings. Be near to us as we cry and as we laugh, as the tears flow. And help us rejoice in your gospel, your gospel promises that held core and hold us all. May this also be a time to embrace and to connect with each other so that together we can be strong. Comfort us through words that speak of eternity. Lord, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In Christ we pray. Amen. We'd like to invite the family now to tell the story of Cor's life. We want to tell you a little bit about our dad, Aicha Weiss, stubborn, opinionated, loving, caring, and devoted to his family. Dad was born in 1925 in Harlem in Holland. He was the oldest of five kids, one brother and three sisters, of which only two sisters are still living. Dad was small in stature, and his youngest sister wrote to us just the other day, saying that she will always remember her little big brother. He was in the Dutch army for two terms in Indonesia, during which time our mother waited for him. They got married in June of 1952 and immigrated to Canada on their honeymoon. They had four children, 15 grandchildren, and just this past Monday, the 33rd great-grandchild was born, and he's here with us, <laughs> and the number 34 is on the way. His, great, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren meant the world to him, and he was always interested in their well-being. Thanks to Sophie, he always made sure he had Smarties in the cupboard in case the kids came to visit. His love of gardening started in Holland, where he worked in a greenhouse at an early age. He continued gardening in Canada. He always had a big garden. Just ask us kids, we were out there hoeing, weeding, picking beans, 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 potatoes, tomatoes, Whitloff, and did I mention beans? Finally, we were done with the harvest, yay. Oh, then much to our surprise, we had to clean and snap the beans, beans, yeah, and the beans. <laughs> None of us ever grew beans in our garden. <laughs> Dad and Mom went camping with us and then with friends and with each other for many years. He took two weeks off and we always went to Shushwap Lake, a real highlight. Four kids in the back seat and all the gear and a big canvas tent on, and a roof rack full, off we went. First stop in Hope on the way up and last stop was the Rodeo Burger Stop on Highway 10, Surrey. Dad was always grateful that he and Mom could also go to Hawaii and Holland together and they also often came to Ontario to visit us. He also dabbled in woodworking in his retirement. He made some trinkets and garden ornaments and mom would paint and sell them at a craft fair. Dad was also an avid reader. He loved history books and he spent hours in his later years reading. He had a lot of books on his bookcase, but make sure you put them in the right order, right Yvonne? <laughs> he was well versed in the Bible and would often tell us that in the Psalms, that living in an age of four score or more is a good age and anything after that was a bonus. Dad was truly blessed as his mind was always sharp right up until the end of his life. Dad had a strong faith and trusting in God was a priority in his life and he instilled it in his children's lives. The last week of his life he mentioned several times that he was ready to go home to the Lord. This past week we reminisced a lot and it was a real comfort to know that Dad was ready to meet his maker. We all felt that we were blessed and that he was a blessing to our family. Now we'd like to Al ask Alan, one of the grandchildren, to come up to read a poem on behalf of the grandchildren. Hello. If you don't know me, I'm Alan. I'm Grandpa's youngest grandchild. So I'm here to read you guys a poem. One quiet day, the angels came and took Grandpa far away. But in the stillness of the night, I could almost hear him say, Dear grandchild, I will miss you, and you mean so much to me. But Jesus called to me to his side, in the heavens I will be. A God's great beauty, no tears or earthly cares, one peace and joy forever, and only love beyond compare. So remember all the good times, don't think about the sad, treasure all the special moments through the years we've always had. 
And if, you do, and if you trust in Jesus, I can promise you this and more. You will get a hug from Grandpa someday on heaven's golden shore. Thank you. Let's sing together two songs that were favorites, of course. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord and lead me, guide me.
Let us pray. God of light, you led Kor his whole life through. You knew him, and you gave him strength and power to endure his weakest hour. You gave him grace, guidance, light. He trusted you as he walked each day with you. You were his savior, whose mercies he sang about with his life. Your faithfulness through all generations was the basis for his salvation, and he praised you for that. We thank you that Kor could live and die in the comfort of belonging to his Savior. Lord, we thank you for the gift that you gave us in Kor. As we've heard the story of his life, we heard how he entered and deeply into, enriched, entered into and deeply enriched our lives. He walked this earth for 91 years. He lived through the Great Depression, the Second World War, the Dutch mobilization in Indonesia. He courageously faced the challenges of immigration. He knew the joys of a growing family, rewarding work, retirement, and also the trials of the sudden loss of his wife and declining health. We thank you for all in him that was good and kind and faithful. Thank you for his quiet faith. He loved his, his family his children and his grandchildren. We will miss the sparkle in his eye. Lord, for all the memories we've shared today, for all the ones we will share in different settings, and for all our private and cherished memories, we thank and praise you. And we look forward to the day when you reunite us with those we love, when every tear is wiped away and we see you face to face. And Lord, as we open your word, we pray that you would open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us today. In Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture passage is 1 Peter 1, verses 22 to 2, verse 3, where it says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for one another, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are, people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babes, crave spir pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends of God, family, friends. Cor Klutwick was a gardener. He had a big garden. I don't know, it must have been something they learned in, in Holland because my dad had a huge garden too and we grew beans and lots of beans and I was with you. I was with you. Um, he didn't really grow flowers. He left that to his kids. He had a little, little plot that he said, that's your plot and they grew flowers on it. And yet he knew what every gardener knows, which is what the Bible, is, Bible passage he selected says, is that things live and things die. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Flowers grow to this beautiful blossom in the height of summer. And then comes a frost and the flower curls up and then it dies and its place remembers it no more, says Psalm 103. That's why Kor chose this passage for his memorial service. All people are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. 
What a sobering truth for all of us that the Bible writer wants us all to know. He's, he's looking at reality, and he says, look, this is the way it is. This is the way of life. We live, we blossom. We look beautiful for a while, and then we die. That reality of life applies to our life. We're born, we gain strength, we recline and die, and it sounds harsh. It sounds harsh, but that's the way it is. We just are here for a moment. We're temporary residents on this earth. Generations come and generations go, and it's a freaky feeling when, when your dad dies and it's now your generation. That's the old generation. It's like, oh, okay, we stepped up, and it just keeps on going. And that's what it is. Kor knew this biblical observable truth. That's why he chose this passage for his memorial service. But what a blossom. What a beautiful life to, to live. He lived for 91 years and blossomed in his own quiet way. We've learned how he was born near Amsterdam, and he witnessed the hardships of the Depression and the brutality of the Nazi occupation during the Second World War, and he was sent by the Dutch army to, to recapture Indonesia for the Dutch, which didn't go so well. And he survived it. And he told many stories about it. Boy, if, if you wanted Kor to talk, ask the word, just say Indonesia. And he'd go, he'd go, oh, yeah, and he'd tell you all kinds of stuff about Indonesia. And, well, I, I learned quite a bit about Indonesia from him. You know, he, um, he came to Canada as an immigrant. You know, a lot, of us, a lot of us know that story, too. We live that story. Coming to Canada, establishing yourself in the new land, you find work, you work hard, you raise your kids, and, and, and you, all your strength is, is, you know, you come to full strength. I met Cor a few years after his wife died, Gerda. He was sad. He was lonely without her. It was just miserable. He just didn't like it. He, his wife was everything to him. But he still enjoyed his family. He spoke about his visits to Ontario. He loved his grandkids. He, he, he was faithful in worship. And he was part of the church community. He always wore a white shirt to church. Always had a jacket and a tie for church. You know, got to dress up for church. That's the way he was trained. That's the way he was taught. You wear a white shirt in church. That was core. He liked to read. He wasn't a loud man. He wasn't flashy or flamboyant, like one of those dahlia flowers, you know, those big stars in the garden, or those giant sunflowers that draw attention to themselves. He was quiet. He engaged in his own way in the world around him. He was, he was modest, like a cosmo flower. Beautiful, and yet not as bright and brash as the others. Kor knew that he was dying. I visited him after he was diagnosed with cancer, and he was calm. He was serene. He said, yeah, I've got cancer. I don't know that I'm going to get treatment. It's always hard to know. What should you do? Should you aggressively treat it, or you should, have, should you have some good years yet with your family? And, and he chose the latter. He wanted to have some good years without having to worry about all those other, you know, the chemo and all that kind of stuff. And he was thankful for his many years. He was thankful for his family, thankful for the blessings of his life. He wasn't going to do heroic measures. He was practical that way. We live, we blossom, we die. It was his time. Flowers blossom, flowers die. And last Sunday, he died. And it was a sad time. Cor knew something more, though. He knew the rest of the passage. All people are like grass, and their glory is like 
The flowers of the field, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. There is something that does not fade. There's something that does not die. Something permanent in this earth. The word of the Lord endures forever. And the word of the Lord that, that Peter is talking about is the gospel that was preached to them. It's good news about the Creator. It's good news about a God who created us, who did not give up on us when we fell into sin. It's good news of, of God who found a way to save us through Jesus Christ, who paid our ransom. He died and rose again to life, and God's power in Christ will keep us, and he gives us an inheritance that will never spoil or fade, that's kept in heaven for us. And that's good news. That's the good news that was preached to Kor from an early age. Good news that Kor found himself believing at an early age, and it's good news that he held on to for the whole of his life. It's the word that enabled him to blossom and be his best. It's the word that enabled him to forgive and to, and to be a, a, a positive Christian in this world. And that's where, that word is what enables us to love from our heart. It's the word that renews us. It's the word through which we're born again into new life of love. It feeds us the milk of God's kindness and moves us away from malice and deceit and envy and, dis and hypocrisy and slander. It's the word that enabled Kor to blossom and be his best. And if this word is in you, if this word is in your heart, you will live forever. And Kor believed that. Christ's word was in his heart and it lived, he lived in this hope and he knew that this cancer would not have the last word. He knew that the infection that eventually caused his organs to shut down would not have the last word. And he knew that his sin would not have the last word. And he knew that even death would have the last word because the last word is what endures forever. The word of the Lord, the living God in whom we can trust. We live and we die and we're here to say farewell to a, a 90 year old, 91 year old saint who lived for God, whose life was lived in this way, according to this path. Because of God's promise, because of his gospel, we will live forever in the unfading glory of life in God's presence. And Kor knows that glory now, and we are glad. We celebrate that truth, even as we miss him. We're sad because he's gone, you children and your grandchildren will remember him and you'll miss him. He's left a big hole in your family. And yet take comfort in the things that he took comfort in, that God's promises are true, that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. He has not forsaken your dad and grandfather and he will not forsake you either. His word stands forever. Trust it. Believe it. And you too will have this life. Amen. Let's sing Abide With Me, a song that, that casts all our care on the Lord and, and asks him to come close to us through, our, through all of our lives.
Please join with me in prayer. Eternal, everlasting God, we fade and die, but your word stands forever. We are a moment, but you are everlasting. We've come face to face with that truth once again today as we mark the death of Cor Klutwig. We praise you for your everlasting word. Your promises stand forever, and we are glad. We have hope only because of this. We have hope only because you remember your word and you save us from our sins. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Through the troubles of this life, we can have a center to our lives. You are God who loves us so deeply. He sent his son to save us. Thank you that Cor had this center to his life. Through all the sorrows of his life and in its many joys, he knew the comfort of belonging, body and soul, in life and in death, to his faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. May we all know this rest and comfort. And Lord, we commend into your care as they grieve this loss, his children, Marina and Bernie, John and Kathy, Sophie and Johannes, Jerry and Yvonne, and all Cora's grandchildren, who he knew by name and, and thought about and prayed for, Chris and Antoinette, Phil and Selena, Dan and Stephanie, Bernie and Jennifer, Amy and Jim, Jason and Randy, Julia and Shao, Matthew, Amy and Thomas, Kimberly and Jason, Amanda and Tyson, Alan, Andrea and Ray, Brad and Leslie, Melissa and Jeff, and his 34 great-grandchildren. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for the ties that bind them together. Lord, 27 of them are in Ontario today because they couldn't come, and we pray that you would be near to them as well. Lord, comfort them with your word and your spirit. Mourn, they mourn his loss, and we pray that you would minister to their spirit. Heal their broken hearts in your time. Bless them and all of us on our journeys through this life with your hope and strength. Lead us, Lord, lead us as we walk each day with you. Lead us our whole life through. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. And receive God's parting blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.